So Stephen, I, I kind of see you as a, a kind of guru, or the guru of sustainability here at Plymouth University. And what I, is really impressive is that you work at both the global and also at the local scale. Can you say something about your, the, the way you approach education for sustainable development? The way I've, I've looked at it for years, really, it's, it's a bit like you know, environmental issues. The more you look at it, the more there is to see. And I think it's got a uh, huge potential, but it, it's, uh, it's a matter of uh, bringing people to it gradually. And, and, and when we started out with the kettle in 2005, we always thought, well, what we need is a, what we would call an invitational approach. So a lot of people are recognized just by looking at the, the newspaper or looking at the news. There's issues there which are, which are very current. So I think awareness is quite strong amongst uh, people and, and, and certainly academics and particularly students. And there's a strong demand for students now for universities to come on board with, with this. Um, so there's a, there's a sort of a latent uh, energy and potential there which we have to tap into um, and then uh, help people, um, help people um, begin to recognize their own con special contribution they can make to this. Uh, because there's an increasing body of good practice, excellent practice, I would say, internationally, which we can easily access, uh, a lot of good thinking uh, on, on the theory side, then you can lead people into that and they can, and they can really start um, traveling with this stuff. Um, so it's a matter of... Um, of engaging that latent interest, I think. I mean, certainly in the 12 years I was here, working with academics across the piece, I never ever came across uh, a colleague who said, uh, what's this got to do with me? This is, this is completely irrelevant to my discipline. And uh, interestingly, the, the uh, National Union of Students have just produced a, an A to Z of sustainability education where every subject under the sun from A to Z is covered with case studies where somebody's done something extraordinary relating to sustainability within their discipline. So and there's all to play for, I think, here. To what extent do you think universities at the moment are <coughs> vehicles or catalysts for um, sustainable development thinking? I, th I, think that, I think they're essential. Um, I think they have a really important role to play uh, because uh, we need uh, people who are, who are creative and uh, resourceful and uh, critical to to really come up with innovative ideas to, to tackle some of these major issues. And uh, I think universities have to be centers of criti critical inquiry and creativity. And if you look at, uh, uh, if you look at um, the business response to sustainability, you know, critical inquiry and creativity are amongst the key skills that they're now naming, which universities have to respond to. So there's an there's emerging consensus, I think, uh, universities are, are, are definitely upping the game on, on this. If you look at international best practice, and I think the SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals, have really been a boost to, to, that, uh, to that momentum. What about UNESCO as an organisation? You've got a long yeah. <coughs> history with working with them. What, what's the role of UNESCO in this area? Okay, so, so UNESCO really t has taken its cue from, in this area from uh, the United Nations. So I think it's important to say that United Nations decade of education for, ES, for the ESD was uh, a United Nations initiative. So that's um, up to 2014. Uh, but UNESCO, as one of the family of United Nations uh, organizations, took the responsibility and we were charged to take that forward. So, so that became a, uh, an agenda and a mandate for their, a lot of their work. Um, so the fact they pursued that for that, for that 10 year period and then since that, have, uh, since that time have taken on this roadmap for ESD has made a big difference to um, the international response. So, so if you take um, the 2016 uh, GEM report, so GEM is, is Global Education Monitoring and they, they produce a, a, an international uh, policy report um, on the state of education every year. So 2016 was called uh, Education for People and Planet. So that's the first time they tied together the sustainability agenda with the educational agenda. So that's really, really important. And again, it's, that goes to policymakers right across the world and sets, uh, sets a bar, if you like, for, for uh, responding to the agenda. So I think without UNESCO setting that mandate, um, I think we'd be in a much weaker position because they have the, they have the kudos and they have the influence to, uh, to influence national policy. So what are the activities that you do with UNESCO? Well, I, I was one of the international reference group for the decade, uh, working with colleagues from different parts of the world to, to help guide that uh, program. 
Uh, and then since then, um, I've been co-chair of a thing called the UNESCO Japan ESD Prize, which has been going for three years. We're now in our fourth year. That's sponsored by the Japanese government. Uh, and I'm co-chair of the jury, international jury of five people. And that's fascinating because we get uh, up to 100 submissions from all over the world, both uh, on formal education and non-formal education, a really interesting and innovative work. Uh, not just with organizations which have deep pockets, but sometimes quite small community groups which are doing amazing things with people. Um, and so it's a fascinating exercise to look through those submissions each year. We're just about to go to Paris to look at another tranche for this year. Uh, and UNESCO, to its credit, are putting a lot of that good work on their website so that it's available for people to, to look at and inspire others. So when you look ahead, is that the kind of thing that inspires you to be optimistic about the future, seeing the ideas that are coming through? Uh, yeah, okay, so, I, <laughs> so, so um, you know, I, I think if you look at the global trends, there's some really deep concerns that we have, but I think uh, on the positive side, that's leading to a lot of raised awareness amongst, uh, amongst different groups of people, both in business and academia and general population, which is inspiring response. And if you take the whole plastics issue, for example, there's a massive wave of awareness, which is almost latent, and it's mm. been been given uh, new life through, through the media, and I think it's uh, you know, leading to all kinds of responses we wouldn't have had before. So I think that's a good example of, of uh, a kind of a readiness, I think, for mm. people to respond to some of these issues and say, okay, what, what do we do to actually get a, some kind of transition here? So you've retired now. How's that going to be? <laughs> uh, So-called retired. Are you going to be busier than ever? Uh, yeah, I seem busier than ever. What are you going to do? Okay, so I've got a, a website coming up which brings together, brings together a lot of the work I've been doing for the past 20 years or so. Um, so that's available mm. to people if they want to follow that work. Uh, I, I will have a, a new book coming out fairly soon, I think, bringing together some of my best stuff, I think, best writing. But also I'm working with other universities to help them along this journey. So, you know, I've got several engagements in the diary for for that and uh, see where things go. But I'm not going to give up just because I happened to step down from Plymouth. Um, <laughs> I still got some gas in the tank, so we'll see, see where it goes. Great, yeah. good luck with that. Thank you.